Hello and welcome to Petrosis webinars. My name is Jason Dixon. I'm one of the training and support geoscientists at Petrosis, and today we're going to have a look at depth conversion without velocities. So today we'll look at converting our two-way time grids to our depth grid when we don't have any velocity data available to us. So we'll run through an introduction, have a look at the input data that we're going to use, I'll run through a demonstration, and then a summary at the end where we'll have a look at all of our output data. So why would we need to do gridding without velocities? In some cases we have some old data which are paper scanned images. So we scanned our images in from a paper seismic line. We only have the navigation data and the two-way time data that we can use to create our two-way time image from. Or we may have poor quality data or missing or lost data. So how do we go about gridding, our veloc gridding without velocities? We can grid up our two-way time data from our seismic and then we have a well file with our depth data in that, we can back interpolate our two-way time data to our well data, and then we can cross plot the depth data at that well location against the two-way time data at that well location. Come up with a formula, the line of best fit, and then we can use that formula in our grid arithmetic processes to depth convert that two-way time to depth. We can also use KED, or Krieging with external drift, where we have a very good correlation between time and depth. And then once we've done all of that, we can also then back, into, back well tire to tie the depth at the well to the depth on our grid. So this is the input data we'll be using today. We have some seismic lines with two-way time interpretation on them. We have some faults here shown in red. And we have our well data. Today we'll be using an Excel for spreadsheet with our well data in it with our locations and our depth to the top of the formation of interest. We've also got a polygon which we've used to clip the data to so that we don't extrapolate into areas of no data. So when we compare our two-way time with our depth data in our cross-plot module, we can then see that we have two-way time versus depth, and we have this formula here that we can use in our gridding algorithm. So now I'll run through a demonstration on how we do this. So this is our mapping window. You can see we have our two-way time data here, our faults, and our well locations. So what we've done already is we've created a two-way time uh, we created a two-way time grid from this data, so I'll show you that now. So this is our two-way time grid that we've gridded up from our two-way time seismic. We've got our well locations, and we have our faults. So now this is the Excel spreadsheet that shows our well locations here. So we have our lats and longs, eastings and northings, the name of our well, and a depth sub C to the top of that formation of interest, which today is the Umarela formation. So how do we back interpolate this data to get our two-way time and depth in the one file? We select our highlight our GIS layer, which is our Excel spreadsheet, and we select Edit. That opens up the spatial editor, which is new in 17.6 and onwards. We have our well in the spreadsheet here highlighted, so we can select Operations and then back interpolate. And that'll open up this new panel here. So you saw we didn't have any other attributes in our Excel spreadsheet, so we're going to have to add a new attribute to back interpolate our two-way time to. So we're going to have to do attribute definition and click the green plus arrow to add a new attribute. Now here we'll call this attribute two-way time. So we select that, highlight it, and just type two-way time in there. Now if we click on the type, we can select decimal. Click OK to that, and that's created a new attribute that we can back interpolate to. So at the top here, we've selected our top Umarela two-way time, which is the grid that we're displaying in our map sheet. So we'll select an attribute. We'll select the two-way time attribute, which we have just created. Select OK. So now when we click Apply, we have back interpolated 165 values at our well locations with the two-way time value at that location from the grid. So we can click OK to that, close that down, we can now save that by clicking the save icon in our spatial editor and then we can exit the spatial editor. So now when we open up the GIS layer we can see that we have the Umarela 2VD for the formation top and we now have the two-way time which has been back interpolated from the grid to that Excel spreadsheet as well. So now we can use this display here, we can right click and select analyze data and chart. We can select an analyze data and chart from any list within Petrosis. Now we can select which we want to cross plot. So in our X value we can select TVD sub C. On a Y value we can select two way time and you can see that that's created a line of best fit but we actually want to do it the other way around so we want to do 
two-way time on our x value, true vertical depth on our y value, so we can see that we have y is equal to minus 1.438 plus 262. And our r-squared value here is 0.977, so we've got a 97.7% confidence that that's a good line of best fit. So we'll make note of this line of best fit through here and that formula, and we'll use that in our grid arithmetic processes. So now we'll close down this, we'll cancel out of here, and we'll open up our surface modelling module. Now to save some time, I've already created these workflows, so we'll open up an existing workflow which has these in them. So the first one we'll look at is depth conversion using the grid arithmetic module, the grid arithmetic process. So we've got this formula here, which is a formula that we had in our cross plot. So it's true vertical depth sub C is equal to minus 1.438 times two-way time plus 262. So I'll just type two-way time there, retype that so that the blue arrow highlights, and we select that blue arrow, and that populates and, and allows us to edit the stuff in the bottom window here. So our output grid, I've typed in numerator depth. We give that a name ourselves. And now the two-way time input grid is the grid that we're displaying on our map window. So we've selected those, we've got the faults turned on, and we've got the output geometry as our map sheet, and we'll clip it to the polygon. We won't need to do that because it's already clipped the two-way time to the polygon. So now we can click OK. We can run that task and create a new grid. So back in our mapping window, we can turn off the two-way time grid, and we'll turn on the grid arithmetic grid. This is the grid that we've just created. We'll refresh that. And you can see that now we have a grid that's in depth that's been converted from two-way time to depth using the formula from our cross plot. Now we have wells at this location, so we can now well tie that grid to those well locations. So back in grid arithmetic, we'll open up the well tie task. So we have our tied grid, which is our Umarella depth grid tied. That's, we name that grid. We have our correction grid, which we also name. Our input grid file is our grid arithmetic grid that we've created in our last uh, task and our input data will be our initial Excel spreadsheet and we're going to select our Umarilla TVD sub C as our Z value to tie to. We'll click OK to that and we'll click OK again and now we can run that well tie task. So we'll click OK there and we can see here that as we get smaller cell sizes our RMS error is reducing down. So and this is our mistile report. So you can see in some areas we've had to warp the grid at 486 metres, in some areas we've had only 25 metres, and in some areas we've had less, in some areas more, to tie that grid to our wells, well locations. So we can click OK there. Back in our mapping module, we can now show our well tied depth converted grid. Now in this location, we're actually fortunate enough that we do have velocities. So what I've actually done as well, is I've done to create a difference grid. So this difference grid is a simple, an A equals B minus C, where A is our difference between a grid, well tied grid, and a grid that has been created using velocities and tied to the well locations. So if I click OK to that and run that, we can now create a difference grid, and it will show us the differences between the actual grid, between the velocity, and the, two, the tied grid from our formula. And you can see here where it's green, it's very little changes, and where we're having the blues and oranges and reds, that's where we're actually having some changes in the grid. So you can see there's a bit of a bullseye up here that's, chain, that's um, come up, and where we've got no well control, we can see we've also got some variations there as well. Now we saw in this uh, cross plot that we had a 97% confidence, or close to 98% confidence in the line of best fit, so that makes this a really good data set to use for krieging with external drift. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at our last one here. This is Krieging with External Drift. So to do Krieging with External Drift, it's simply the same as gridding. We'll have our input data, which in this case, again, will be our uh, formation tops from our well location. So we'll have the true vertical depth sub C for the top Eurimarella formation as our Z column here. Click OK to that. Our output geometry, again, will be our map sheet. The methods is where it's different. This is where we select Krieging with external drift as a method of gridding. 
and we have an external trend grid that is our two-way time grid that we have in the initial input data that we used in the grid arithmetic to convert the time to date we use that same two-way time grid here and we can put in an error grid which is our error creating with external drift grid the maximum number of creaking points used I've done some background testing before this webinar and we've come up with the number 16 that we're going to use for that we're not going to use faults they're in the initial grid and we won't bother doing any clipping or smoothing we'll click OK to that and go into the actual setup of the creaking with external drift so here we have an error message popping up so we have one of the 165 points actually lies outside of the area selected in our external trend grid so if we'll click OK and that point will be excluded from our algorithm so that's fine we'll select OK to do that we can click on the data analysis tab here and then we can see that it's trying to pick a trend in our data and it's picked up we can see that there's roughly within 150 degree direction we can pick up a trend here plus or minus 20 degrees or so so when we go back to our variogram to set this up we've set up 150 plus or minus 20 degrees we've done some background testing here to save some time as well and we've going to select that it's going to be anisotropic data and we're going to use the exponential variogram type so now we can set the initial variogram select the refined fit and we'll click OK to that we won't do that because this takes a little bit of time so I've already done this and what I'll do now is I'll just show you the result so back in here we can now display our Krieging with external drift and this is the result of our depth converted grid using Krieging with external drift where we use our two-way time grid to warp to tie to the well locations I've also done a difference grid for the creaking with external drift and a difference grid with, with the tied creaking with external drift as well so we can have a look at those and we'll go back into our PowerPoint and have a look at those now. So here are our final maps. This is the gridding with arithmetic map without any weld tie. This is the weld tied grid arithmetic map where we use the formula to convert our two-way time to depth and then weld tied that to our well locations. This is the Krieging with external drift map and then we've also well tied that map that has very little variation on that. And this map here is the depth map that we created using the seismic data and our velocities and then well tied that to our well locations. So you can see that our well tied grid arithmetic map matches quite well with a well tied map using velocities. So it's a good correlation and a good match to the actual data that's present the, that we have available to us. Now these are the difference maps. They all these, as in the previous example, all of these maps here are using the same color bar, so they're all using the same distribution to to show the colors here. So you can see with the Gribbard arithmetic map with no well tie, zero is the green where there's not a lot of change, so that's actually quite good. But we, away from our well control, we do have some changes here. When we well tie that, those changes are drastically reduced. Then we have the Krieging with external drift map. That also has some changes away from well control. And again, with the well tie, we also have some changes away from well control, but overall, quite a good match with the data. Most of the grid is actually green. So, the final thoughts cross plotting data can determine if there is a strong relationship that does exist between our time and our depth grid. And where we have a line of best fit formula, we can use this to convert our depth from our two way time grid using a grid arithmetic formula. And when we have this result in grid, we can then well tie that and give a really good depth converted grid. We can also use Krieging with external drift when we have a good correlation between our time and depth to convert our, well, our time maps to depth when we don't have any velocities available to us. And when we compare these to an actually velocity converted grid, we can see that this actually holds true that the data is quite well represented. We do have three other videos on our website, which is which gridding algorithm should I use, which goes into differences between different variations of grids and how they best match your data set. Advanced gridding in Petrosis using Krieging, which goes into much more detail in the Krieging process. And then depth conversion with Petrosis, where we actually look at how to depth convert when we do have velocities available to us. So thank you for your time today, and I hope you found this useful.